God's eternal focus. God's eternal purpose is to make known his wisdom through the church, it is a temple. To make his wisdom known is to deliver it to the congregation, the temple exists in the hearts of the people who believe. Also, we pray and keep our hearts steadfast throughout trials. Paul set forth God's eternal purpose, Ephesians 3 9 11, and he gives two practical applications in, Ephesians 3 12 13. Having eyes for the eternal means that you see things the way God sees them, and you don't get caught up in the worries of the world, because the Creator of the universe has the whole world in His hands. When we focus on eternal life, 2 Peter 3.13 says Nevertheless we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Jesus spent His last days baptizing, preaching, and teaching, He also healed the blind, dead, lame, and sick. Although He was a forgiver of sin, the things He did help formed a great and mighty nation for a renewed foundation in the future which, will need modern science and religion. Too often we undermine the value of the future's foundation and what is supposed to bring. To undermine is to destroy by secret activity or stage underhand attacks to collapse or weaken a foundation. This often includes, contradicting, hindering, underestimating even destroying or falsifying legal documents for one's benefit. Whatever is hidden behind closed doors such as drinking problems or sexual sin, all unrighteousness will come to light. The Holy Spirit manifests in the presence in people's lives to set them free from bondage. Mythical themes are surrounding the New Testament, once you know about them, it is wise to interpret the basic message God intended, rather than stretching the truth for one's agenda or propaganda. According to the Bible if you believe, know, and obey Him to reveal His promise in your life. It is virtuously moral and righteous, sufficient for building faith surrounding His knowledge. In 2 Peter 1 1-5 it says, To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, and of Jesus our Lord, according to as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. A spirit world full of laziness. Sure, the world has transformed into a world full of evil and lazy spirits, with many forms of justifications as the common denominator. Let's just be clear you are only justified through Jesus Christ, and justifications don't cover sin. But the average person fears and regrets things from the past that hindered success, and appeared dogmatic from time to time. Asserted arrogant and selfish opinions as truths, due to influence or instigation. We all have made false and misleading statements trying to convince others we knew what we were talking about when we never researched topics of interest. We all have taken something that didn't belong to us, and we all have lied. We all have hated someone who was of an angelic or godly type. At one point in time, we all have hindered someone else's success, with negative energy. And we all have appeared defenseless, vulnerable, and weak to other evil spirits. All this is many forms of negative energy that rub off on others, and although these are basic sins. The bigger sins will eventually be dealt with, but in the meantime, we are to forgive our enemies. Laziness is when you are unwilling to use energy for whatever non-life-threatening reason. Of which you are unlikely to do a task that you perceive as difficult, meaningless, or uncomfortable. Therefore, you may lie or refuse to complete the task because it doesn't affect you directly or indirectly. Or you may lie or refuse to complete the task because there is no instant gratification or reward. You don't want to appear lazy with an ego, so work to avoid defense mechanisms to be able to distinguish between real danger and empty threats. When you're incapable of completing tasks due to a physical or mental condition, you may not defend yourself because it is a natural feeling of despair or distress. In which, you may be considered as unable to take care of yourself. Once you feel better, self-care to reach achievements and goals, do not remain in the same mindset unto death. According to WebMD self-care is the way to practice taking better care of yourself which includes, get a hobby, limit screen time, get a message, listen to music, get lots of sleep, go outdoors, plan a getaway, keep a journal, reduce clutter, meditate, talk to someone, and be charitable. During these harsh economic times, people tend to think of starting a business as being incapable of achieving, and hard work as slave-driven. When you estimate low value on a return before it has been established, it is more than likely the business or work obligations will never transpire. If you are a highly authoritative parent who doesn't support individuality, your kids will fail at keeping promises. Your child can't continually go through life undermining things with self-doubt, or everything will fail. You must change those beliefs to change the way your child thinks. Jesus thought about future generations as a healer and saver, not as a ruiner. Back in the day many people were able to visualize with their own eyes Jesus' value for hard work and determination. Particularly when Jesus healed the people at the pool of Bethesda, Sunday came though it was a day of rest before the change. He still honored the need to heal people and save the lost, it was his life goal. 
He felt all this was a major requirement since they didn't have proper doctor care back then, and they relied solely on people who could naturally heal illnesses. Although he knew many righteous people prior had been killed for what they believe, he zealously kept going on his journeys. Ultimately the crucifixion, doubters, or haters never modified his righteous good works personification to be able to give God glory in the end. Matthew 5 1-9, Be Inspired by Jesus Christ. Completing Tasks 1. Plan Goals 2. Accomplish Those Tasks 3. Celebrate Those Accomplishments 4. Plan More Goals to Accomplish and Then Celebrate Those Accomplishments too. Forgiveness and Judgment In this old world, most people perceive demonic dwellings as a death sentence that comes with a huge payoff. The money exchange that started back in the day, continues to distort the next generation's belief system of the Bible, which often distorts common values through justifications. The worldly desires of money enable pervasive ideas and opinions about the way demon dwellings ought to be dealt with. It has become too common to misguide people who are weak to demonic dwellings and classify them as stupid or unstable, which is a form of judgment. When in fact weaknesses are caused by fear and self-regrets, and demonic dwellings are direct results of defiled flesh. The bulk of rich people's wealth has been surrounded by unrighteous deeds for quite some time, overruling the victim's affair of matters dear to the heart. Back in the day victims weren't allowed to even point the error of judgment out to exorcists nor psychiatrists for fear of more casting out rituals being used upon them, and this still seems to be a major error in human judgment nowadays. Assuming one will ever be awakened under incarceration of the mind from highly medicated conditions to inform themselves to create change. Being possessed to a certain entity gets its greatest support from regular everyday people not believing they can overcome. The fact is demonic activity gets assigned too many battlegrounds through dominance and subordinates money laundering tactics, which can become annoyances. All this shows is the world has become less forgiving of the innocent and more demanding of the evil spirits. Which says sufferers are being victimized three ways by the demonic tricksters, supernatural analysts, and swindlers. It is wise to visualize demonic dwellings as a need for natural forms of purification, and as a form of survival. The people who suffer need to adhere to natural affections form through natural remedies, to notice the difference between real danger and empty threats. A mind aligned with truth is powerful than the harnessed energy of the unconscious behavior. More people must be enabled to update, new, and old data stores in a fast amount of time at the conscious level to re-energize to live out full potential, all to become a better nation. We are not helpless material objects, separated waiting for an afterlife with limits of the quantities of energy due to evilness. We are a people with the ability to live an eternal life in the here and now, because God forgives, so we can learn to too. Our higher spiritual nature is connected to the true wellspring of energy and power, it is time to awaken souls to true spiritual empowerment. There are alternatives to exorcism, so just stop, giving the evil spirits battlegrounds, to form money laundering tactics. Direct the righteous anger towards further education, and don't give the evil spirits a place in your home. Also, be more forgiving of innocent people, and forgive evil spirits to let go of the wrong emotions. Most importantly groom the children around for marriage, to eliminate them being groomed for sex. Help the children learn to distinguish between real danger and empty threats with bullies in church, school, etc. All to avoid them becoming the spoil and prey. Again, it is up to us to change the cycles of abuse and vainness. As a Christianity ritual, exorcism is a practice used for casting out demons, the exorcist is often perceived as a Christian and a person who has learned supernatural skills. An exorcist uses prayers and religious tools, amulets, formulas, gestures, icons, symbols, etc. The exorcist may call on, Jesus aka the Spirit of God, or angels, and archangels to intervene throughout the exorcism. Exorcists believe the authority of exorcisms is given to them by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Practitioners consider exorcism as a cure rather than a punishment, and people considered to be possessed are tied down if there is potential for violence. From a scientific view, some cases are considered people who are narcissists or suffering from low self-esteem and act demonically possessed to gain attention. Scholars described exorcism and mental illness as psychosurgery aka, neurosurgical, or psychotherapy used to release demons from the brain. Negative Side of Exorcism The guidelines on exorcisms were first published in 1614 and were revised in 1999. Warning Real-life exorcisms can result in fatality. Occults and New Age activity was out of control in Europe during 2004. However official priest exorcists and exorcisms from around the world have increased rapidly since guidelines were revised. Nowadays exorcists' names aren't kept a secret, and their contact info is open for search via the internet. The priest is performing at least 8 to 12 exorcisms every night, and yet there is no central database for exorcisms performed. The psychiatrist and priests that have worked with victims of demonic possession from around the world say, exorcism demands problems are escalating. Initially, a priest's main goal is to help afflicted people resume a relationship with God while on their spiritual journey. Various cases are demonic oppression, obsession, 
depression infestation behaviors, where people suffering do insignificant things multiple times a day. Even sin addictions, all of which are very distressing and painful. An exorcism takes two hours, the process takes a minimum of six months, and the priest may work with the person every month for four years. Signs of demonic possession include superhuman strength, aversion to holy water, or the ability to speak in unknown languages. Other potential signs of demonic possession include spitting, cursing, or excessive masturbation. Some claim supernatural strength when they are in a state of possession. Psychiatrist says the mentally ill who believed, they were under attack by evil spirits mostly all were mistaken. But it is important to not confuse diabolical possession with psychiatric illnesses. Because only 1% of individuals who claim demon attacks need an exorcist. Both Christians and non-Christians are asking to receive spiritual intervention, and the services include demonic attachment, infestation, vexation, or full possession. Attachment consists of a disembodied spirit of the dead human soul. Whether a Christian or not, exorcisms are done on people who strongly believe they will work. Many seeking help is desperate, due to suffering for quite some time. They are telling priests, the paths of psychology and psychiatry are yielding fewer results. Though priests have access to psychologists and psychiatrists as a part of their discernment team, including a prayer team, all team members believe Satan exists. Priests are blaming everything from alcohol or drug use, pornography, telecommunications to interest in black magic, new age practices, occults, and Satanism, Ouija boards, tarot cards, voodoo, witchcraft phenomenon to increasing demands in the number of exorcisms. Also, they blame popularity in paganism and diminished authority of the church, and the emptiness is being replaced with addictive behavior. Although evilness is on the rise, religion gets perceived as outdated and unbelievable. Occults practice Ouija boards, tarot cards, or New Age practices that also cast spells, curses, or summon the dead. Through witches and warlocks while, worshipping Satan and other demons, and most practices promote blasphemous thoughts. Many people believe demonization or satanic rituals are the results of increases in the addiction phenomenon. The devil language also forms high energy. Though keeping up with exorcism demands are a constant struggle. I avoid talking about a devil or Satan as if it exists when most times these are enemies most people are referring to. In the last decade books and films have increased, about exorcism and supernatural powers into bookstores and online networks. The Old Testament says when one grows in knowledge one also grows in despair. With more talks of the devil and Satan, evilness, beliefs, faith, and values rapidly diminish. This leads to serious physical, psychological, and spiritual damages for youth demon possession effects. Priests say demonologists, exorcists, psychiatrists ought to work together through religion and science for an interdisciplinary approach. Since Jesus' ministry is surrounded by several myths, some youth aren't interested in knowing more about him, but you can't be that self-righteous. Knowing more about Jesus can increase guidance, righteousness, and wisdom in your life. His ministry still is capable of helping to deliver people from the bondage of warfare. We live in the flesh immorally, Jesus also lived in the flesh and he never did it immorally. 1 Timothy 2:16. To be accountable for sins of the flesh you must inherit righteousness through Jesus Christ. He offers the inheritance to all who believe, so follow, and obey his guidance precociously. A study performed at the University of Cambridge conducted by David Llewellyn, who examined vitamin D levels in 1,700 men and women from England, aged 65 and older. The results showed that subjects lowest in vitamin D3 performed poorest on a mental test compared to subjects with higher levels of vitamin D3. With more amounts of D3, you can't go wrong. 